Hey guys! <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back to Game Does Play Games. Uh, today, we are gonna play some Mario Maker, but we're not just gonna play it. Uh, we're actually going to kind of talk about some level design stuff with Mario Maker as our tool to do so. Oh, it's gonna be great. I'm so excited. I've been playing around with this so much. And um, so basically these levels are coming about because I played a lot of levels and some of them have been good and a lot of them have frankly not been mm -hmm. very good at all. Um, and uh, that's number one because people just like to have fun and mess around and that's totally fine. But for those who are actually trying to come up with good levels, we figured we'd come up with some videos to see if we can inspire you to, to you know, ramp up your, uh, your skills a little bit. To bring your game. To bring your game. To, to make your game. To bring your make your game. Uh, <laughs> um, so these episodes yeah. are going to be a little bit different from our normal uh, program. Um, basically, uh, you can expect that these videos are going to be a lot more edited than they normally would be. Um, but hopefully that's only to help make sure that what you're seeing is the most interesting stuff and you get the... Uh, I don't know, tips and feedback from us a lot faster than just sitting through us going, uh, how do I do this thing? Yeah, right. So, um, did we talk about what we're going to do today, specifically? Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about, um, what difficulty, or no, uh... It, teaching the player. Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of levels will begin just, like, right out of the gate being really difficult, uh, or immediately throwing the player into something that they're not expecting. And uh, not warning your players that things are going to happen is the, the, one of the worst forms of like, a, a design flaw you could have in your level. Uh, you need to teach your player. You need to let, let the difficulty ramp up so when the challenges come about, they're prepared for them. Right. And, and I suppose in Mario Maker, a lot of people don't consider that because a lot of people already understand the Mario mechanics, right? So they're building levels for people that already have... The, the expectation is that most players that are playing Mario Maker already know how, how Mario works, right? Yes. Um, but there's a lot of people that are new to the series, or at least the 2D version of Mario, right? Like, there's, yeah, like, there's a whole had, generation of people that have never seen the original stuff. I've had, like, four people, four friends play my level, and uh, two of them have, like, barely ever picked up a Mario game, and I was appalled. Like, honestly, just, like, offended. <laughs> it was like, how how dare you not understand this already? And uh, I guess we should get out of that mindset. So right, pretend it's not your player a... doesn't know anything about Mario. <laughs> Which is generally good design practice to begin with. So uh, I guess uh, one of the first questions I like to ask myself at the stage is mushroom or no mushroom, or upgrade or no upgrade right at the beginning. And uh, that right there will determine the difficulty of your level. So um, I'm gonna say right now that it's not gonna start off very difficult. I want the player to earn that mushroom. So I'm not gonna put one at the beginning of the stage. Now, the other thing to consider, though, is say this is your very first time playing Mario. If you look at classic Mario, um, they always have a mushroom in the first stage at the very beginning to teach you that mushrooms are a mechanic you need to look for. Mm -hmm. um, and generally, in, in classic Mario, they teach you that they, they put you in a circumstance where it's very unlikely where you won't get the mushroom um, to make sure that that's enforced in the player. Absolutely. You know what? Um, let's then let's take it the next step and just... Uh... Do, do an homage to uh, World 1-1. So uh, right off the bat, we're just going to start this, right? So first thing, the player gets a little bit of running room so they uh, they can know, uh, they understand running. Now, while they're running, they're going to be moving right, like, you know, moving left or right. Pretty mm -hmm. typical thing. First thing they're going to do is they're going to jump at the first block they see, if they cho choose to jump, and they'll be rewarded for that mushroom, right? That was, uh, there's been so many analysis on World 1-1 dash that they're, there's just so much to say. Oh yeah. So basically, by doing that, now now I'm Big Mario, and I'm gonna look at these and go, well, I hit this block that was a question mark. Since it's a question mark, it was basically begging me to hit it. Now I'm gonna go over to these things and go, well, what happens if I hit them? Oh, I can blow them. I can break them. So okay. So our first thought, right? We're teaching the player. They're gonna move toward this question mark. They're gonna get the mushroom. They've realized that they've hit a block before, so they're gonna try hitting another block. Then they're gonna look at this one up here and go, well, if I destroy all these down here, then I'm not gonna. Be be able to see what happens when I hit this. This right here is already, you know, this is already, uh, here we'll do, yeah, multi-grab. Well, this, this, this points upward, right? This tells the player, hey, it's basically forming an arrow. So just naturally their inclination is to go here and hit this. And then they hit it once a coin comes out and they can keep hitting it. Mm -hmm. And then bam, eventually they're no longer able to hit it. So here's what I'm thinking. So 
You've been building a lot of your levels off the idea of boss battles. Do you want to kind of use your current experience to kind of build something along that idea? We can. Those levels are incredibly challenging to make. Um, because of the limitations given to you um, by by the game itself. But if we're gonna, we can we can give it a go. Cool. So if we're gonna do the boss battle challenge, like a boss battle, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna cut this out. We basically don't want this to be the area we're fighting the boss in, mm -hmm. um, because that I mean for multiple reasons. But basically, we don't want. The, we don't want the free movement, um, and the reason you don't want complete free movement is because it actually messes with the AI of the boss. Right, yeah, because if it's totally free movement, like say you have Bowser, suddenly if Bowser just like has all the space to run and fly in, he will do so. Yeah. He's not going to just follow Mario around. So we're going to start this off, it's going to look pretty cool, it's going to be like, oh, this is kind of like World 1-1, any any person who's played enough Mario will know what that is. Uh, go up here, be like, are there the coins? Oh yeah, there are the coins, and they're, they're, while they go up for the coins, they're immediately going to see the tunnel. And so they're going to look at this and be like, well, that's interesting. As any Mario player, the first thing I would do is walk over here and jump to see if there's any uh, mm -hmm. gift for me there. There's not, I'm not going to put that in there. And then, uh, so I think we need to decide what we want our boss battle to be. Um, we yeah. could do classic Bowser, right? And then we have to teach, and then and then we have to. Well, okay, I guess there's two things, right? We have to decide who the boss is going to be and how we're presenting the challenge, because it's not just killing the boss, right? It's also, you know, staying on platforms while fighting the boss maybe solving a puzzle in order to kill the boss. Yeah, the, the thing that determines whether it is a boss battle level versus just having the boss in it is that the boss the boss itself has to be an imposing force at mm -hmm. all times. It doesn't have to be something you're fighting at all times, but it has to be there as a challenge. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring Mario over and then we can decide from here. So for this one, uh, if it's Mario 3, I actually don't remember how Bowser acts, to be perfectly honest, I forgot. Uh, I think he jumps up and crushes things below him, much like Mar the Bowser in Mario 3. I'm just throwing this down here. Um, does he do the, um, the like, ground stomp thing that stuns you? I think he does. So we're just gonna go ahead and play from here, see what Bowser does. He's gonna shoot fireballs, typical. So did we choose Mario 3 for any particular reason? Nope. Okay. I... I, mean, I like it's... Mario 3, I like I, I like them all, I just chose it. Fair. Yeah. Um, that is important to bring up. Which Mario do you want to play? Super Mario World, you're able to throw turtle shells upwards. So my first boss battle, I based it off of that, had to be in Super Mario World. Uh, Super Mario 3, you have the, uh, the raccoon tail, and you have um, the ability to grab shells, but not the ability to throw them upward. Same with uh, Mario U. So it changes the game in subtle ways, which is usually good to build your design around the, those mechanics. Um, they generally translate pretty well. Um, I did build my my like World 1-1 level on Classic Mario and decided later to make it Super Mario World. Um, and there were some things that didn't work or were almost too easy in Super Mario World in comparison to Classic Mario. Um, but it's if you do change, it's you just got to go through it and make sure you modify the design accordingly. All right, so, uh, so we're gonna make we're, flying Bowser. We're gonna make a flying Bowser. He's gonna be imposing force. Now, as flying Bowser, he's just gonna run at me at all times, no matter where I'm at. Now, this ensures basically that he's going to be uh, he's going to be in in this uh, stage basically at all times, unless I run so fast that I leave him behind. The interesting thing about the little clown helicopter thing clown mobile i don't know what it's called is that that didn't exist until super mario world new no. yeah so it's um, interesting that they have it in classic mario backwards compatible so to say yeah, yeah it's pretty cool so i'm just gonna make eight of these and uh we're, we have a level no no that's, that's not how it works <laughs> all right so basically what we're gonna do here is we're just going to drop mario from uh this world um, the pipe looks a little weird, but that's fine. I didn't really want to do a door and then I'd have to probably use multiple levels and for ease's sake I'm just gonna use a tunnel um, Let alone it gives us a lot more room to play with a lot more room. if we use doors Then we'd only be able to work on layer one 
So what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to place a brick right about here, number one. The player will fall out, run into this, and that will prevent them from running straight into this fireball. At the same time, it will show them that, hey, there are going to be things on the ground getting in your way, and there are going to be fireballs coming from the floor. That's fair. So my question actually is, should we build the boss battle first and then build the training area second? Because that way we know what the training area is supposed to be teaching the player. We can do either. Yeah, I suppose we could build the training area first and then build the boss battle based on what we taught the player in the training area. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we'll have more creativity though if we build the boss battle first. It's like building your game and then building the tutorial to accommodate that game. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do here is they're going to start in World 1, they're going to go through the tunnel to get to World 2, there's going to be some obstacles they have to pass. This will be the area that teaches them, that teaches the player what they should be expecting in the harder parts of the level to come, and then they'll go their tunnel, they'll come back to World 1 where they'll do the boss fight, and then lo and behold, bam, look at that, they're at, uh, they're, they're at the axe. Yep. Ask him a question. <laughs> uh, but usually, I have the. I don't know if it's a good or a bad habit, but I have the habit of, of checking every time I put something in big. Like so, obviously, I can't see that area. Uh, I have the habit of checking after every like big implementation of a level. No, and, I think that's smart. Um, that way, I I I'm constantly making sure that everything is is working because if you try to build multiple elements and. Uh, like one of them doesn't work that means you if like you put in three different things one of them doesn't work you're probably now going to have to change all three of them to mm -hmm. accommodate that so i'm going to bring that closer it's going to pull the uh, they're going to be like oh look it's kind of like world dash one one dash one they come here they'll be like all right cool there's a tunnel on the other side although immediately what's bothering me right there is that the tunnel on the right side is not as big as the tunnel on the left all right so obviously we want bowser uh we'll say probably about here um, that gives the player some room to jump over him. The closer he is to the axe, uh, it very, it makes the uh, difficulty of the game higher or lower depending on what he is doing. If he is throwing a lot of axes or hammers or whatever, if he's throwing a lot of those out in the air, it does make it harder if he's closer to the axe because the player is going has less room to work with. Mm -hmm. However, the issue there is that if he's very close to the axe and you run just straight at him with a mushroom or any other upgrade, you run at him and you get hit, you just jump straight over him into the axe while you're still invincible. The farther you bring him from the axe, it may, once you get over him, obviously the battle is over, but at the same time, it does give the player, or give the player less leeway for just being able to run at him. So, um, we're just gonna kinda place him there. All right, so basically here's what I'm thinking. We make this relatively simple. We don't have to make Bowser an actual superimposing force himself, uh, but we are, so we're gonna add some additional challenges. Good. Here's, here's kind of what I'm thinking. We put him on two or three blocks right here. Ooh, make it hard for him to jump. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and then, <laughs> <laughs> well said, sir. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that looks fun, but we're gonna do this. Okay, so basically that prevents the player from running under. They're gonna have to jump over him. He's gonna be an initial force. He is gonna probably run, like hop up and off the block at some point. It requires a little bit of precision at the, on the player's behalf, but is that all? Is this all there's going to be? No, no, it's going to have to get much more difficult. So I'm thinking we have a constant theme with the stage and uh, we add one of my favorite characters from the Mario series ever, ever, Kamek. Uh. So Kamek is going to start off right about here. And uh, you know what? Let's be fun and put this guy in a cloud. All right. Oh my. Um, I lied. He can't go in the cloud, but he can go into a balloon. All right. <laughs> Boom, we'll, do, we'll just do this. So basically, if they're big, they could choose to slide under it or they can jump over it, but either way, what we're doing is we're gonna add fodder to um, to Kamek's ability. I'm gonna put him up here, though, because I don't want the player just being able to jump right on this thing and kill Kamek. Yeah, if the play that's one thing that I have noticed in a lot of other Mario Maker levels is players, a lot of people <clears throat> will design um, their levels to have like the balloon or a Lakito. Um, and as soon mm -hmm. as you kill either, it's just the rest of the level is easy. Yeah, and that, that is a little bit of an issue. So instead, we're not going to do the block because literally one block allowed me to fix this. 
And uh, instead, what I'm going to do is... Mech, you're no longer getting a balloon. So he also has the ability to teleport. If you don't put him into a balloon, he can just kind of teleport around, which is really nifty. And that allows me to do anything I want, basically, with, with throwing down blocks and stuff like that. So I'm just going to have an imposing force right there. Um, and then after that, well, we can do kind of whatever. All right. So um, in order to make him thrive a little bit more, we need more natural environments. And that's mm -hmm. what I say we do. Um, we, we add a little, a few more things that are actually going to be difficult unto themselves. Or, uh, so we can either do these guys, which I believe we should, um, seeing as hell, basically, you know, we're going to have a little fun. <laughs> Alright. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to say that this fireball is going to be right here. If they try to jump over him, that could be an issue. Probably not, but it could be. We'll put it one higher. And that's as high as this thing is ever going to get. Hmm. It's not going to jump any higher. And then, uh, you know what? We'll, uh, we'll basically add to the challenge and put this guy right here. It can jump. And with a perfect jump, I think you might still be able to get over that. Well. Well timed. Um, so if we do it, I think right about here, if the player takes their time, it could, this could be a force for them to jump over. Mm -hmm. So we have that issue, all right? And then uh, two fireball, let's just throw another one, I don't know, we'll say right mm, there. Cool, put it one away, gives the player some time, some room. All right, so the player runs up, goes there here, comes up, they can bounce over this, this fire, fly, fire bar can be an issue. They're trying to reach, um, we'll say this bar right here, but of course this fire bar needs to be timed well. Fire, ball, fire bar is extremely important to figure out how to time. Oh, yes. Right, so that was pretty easy. Um, this wasn't an imposing force, and it's always going to rotate uh, counterclockwise. Oh, that's cool. I'm glad you can choose its starting rotation. Oh yeah, it's absolutely necessary. Um, whenever I design a level, I always assume that the player is going to be moving at max efficiency, as in they're going to be running through the stage as fast as possible, right? So that's ah, pretty that dangerous. was good. Yeah, that was good. So uh, that that's exactly what I want, is what happens if Mario has a mushroom here, because we've been testing it without that. Right. <laughs> come back, how'd you come back? So, obviously, a mushroom is just going to allow you to breeze through it. Um, but I think, in most castle stages, what they do is they don't reward you a mushroom before the end of the stage. Hmm. Instead, uh, you get nothing. So, it makes it, the idea is, like, if you have, you get a mushroom early in the stage, and if you can manage to keep it throughout the whole stage, then congratulations, you deserve to breeze past B Bowser. Um, but if you don't have the mushroom, you have to be a lot more careful. And I think that's what we emulate here. Cool. We yeah. don't reward them at the beginning of this area. So now that we actually have the end challenge, now we can actually figure out how we want the the teaching zone to function. Yep, and that's where we're at now. So the first, I'm just putting that up there to get it out of the way. Yeah, it's um, good to have it ready. Because I don't want to put it at the end of the stage. I don't know if I'm going to get to the end of the stage. I don't mm -hmm. know what it's going to be like. So, right, we're just going to, we're going to appear out of this tunnel. We could appear out of that tunnel there. We could do it upward. We could do whatever. It kind of depends on how you want it to feel and how do you want the player to proceed. Um, in one stage, I've had where there's like bricks basically all the way around. So when they show up, they have one way to go. And then it's like, bam, that, that you, you would drop down here and go forward. In fact, I even did, where's it at? I even did one of these. So it was like, once you get through, there's no turning back. Yeah. I think for this particular level, I don't think it, it matters. I don't if think they... it's necessary at yeah. all. But uh, you have your options there. So they're going to they're gonna drop down here. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that block there. I think that's interesting. It slows down the pace just a little bit and prevents them from running into the uh, the fireball if they're a little careless. Mm -hmm. We know that there's a Kamek, mm -hmm. there's the the, uh, the trampoline, there's fire bar, there's disposable blocks and non-disposable blocks. There are platforms that are going to drop. And that's basically what we're considering. So I think we start with Kamek. Okay. Um, I think Kamek needs to be that that element that is persistent in the entire level. Nice Kamek. 
Just come back everywhere. Let's make the training zone this, the hardest part. This right now is is basically what you're going to see in most Mario stages right now if you go online. Yeah, unfortunately, I feel like a lot of people decide that their challenge should be close to impossible Spam and just spamming yeah. everywhere. It's it's a little cluttered yeah. and, and not good design. Like, it can be challenging, right? But just because it's challenging doesn't make it fun. And fun is sort of the name of the game, right? Yep. So, um, here's what I'm thinking. Uh, they get past this area. Kamek is going to show up. Um, we don't want him to show up. In... Oh, so he's gonna be right there. I don't think we show him right away. No, I agree. So uh, I think we should have at least one platforming element stage. before Kamek really appears. I agree. Um, so uh, let's say we've already shown a fireball. We can, or uh, you know, a lava ball coming from that. We can come back to that later. So I think fire bar. That's very exactly simple, what I'm thinking too. Easy fire bar. Um, comes through, what we do is we can uh, give the player a little bit of room and speed to run. They pick up speed right about here is my guess. Um, that I can only guess because I've played enough Mario. Um, so I think right about here is mm -hmm. if, if they get stopped here, jump over, they'll gain speed right about right about here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, that being said, the moment they gain speed, boom, there's a challenge in their way. Now. We want to look at all the parameters of our fire bar. If it's right there, Mario's going to get hit unless he ducks, which is fine. Mm -hmm. um, optionally, he can choose to jump over it, right? And so, if he's going to if he's going to jump over it, we should probably give him a little help there. So here's here's what I'm thinking. Actually, I actually <clears throat> think we're introducing the fire pillar too soon. Think so? I think right now the platforms and the fireballs are enough challenge for the very basic introduction of the challenge. And Kamek is, is placed, I think, pretty well, actually. I do kind of like him being there. Um, because it's at that point you really start to see that you have to dodge bullets while um, jumping on these platforms that can be destructible by Kamek. Yeah. Um, I think if we introduce the fire pillar following this point, then it's actually good timing. It's a good... Uh, like challenge flow, because um, right off the bat, if I feel like we don't introduce fire pillar there, then we have like nothing going on right here. There's kind of I I disagree because the player's moving through that that part so fast that they're only sacrificing you know a, a about five seconds right, and they're already dodging fireballs in that time. Basically, I think we want to make sure that it's not too challenging right off the bat. How's that? I would reduce, remove one of those fireballs and maybe move the other in the center, and then we're good. Yeah. I don't know if that does anything, but we'll find out. Whoop. Can't really. If I screw it up, I can't tell. Damn it, come back. <laughs> Get out of here! Yeah, I mean, that's not high enough. That might be difficult. Man, sometimes just one one uh, uh, pixel off. Yeah, that's fine. Messed up. Just gonna keep going. I am punished for it. It's pretty good. So uh, basically, we have the fire bar. We can do a number of things with it. I don't think I. There are some moments where it's cool to like show the player that they need to jump on the block in order to get through. Mm -hmm. But this is too early for that because we're still teaching them how to play the game, right? Or not how to play the game, but how to get through this level. So right here gives them a little bit of a room. Uh, I think we do a safe fire bar where there is a ground underneath it. Mm -hmm. um, or we could even elevate the player and um, make where the fire bar is right now the new floor, if that makes sense. We could do that. So basically, while they're trying to get up the stairs, the fire bar is an imposing force. It's kind mm -hmm. of a jerk, right? Um, that right there. Yeesh. I think that should be pretty challenging. It's it's sticky is the term I like to use for it. It causes the player to kind of get stuck in place. See? Mm. Not smooth. That's fair. Way to make it smooth would be either to move it up a spot or to move it. I think up moving really it up is. a spot would be the best option. Yeah. We could even make a full wall there, too, if we really wanted to. Um, yeah, we could, but that actually works out pretty well. It basically says, 
It is possible to go through this. It's going to be challenging, but if you do, you're going to breeze past both this guy and Kamek. So it's, and it's, it's almost more challenging, too, to do it the faster route. Even though you breeze through things, it requires more precision, and that's why it's more challenging. Precisely. Cool. After that, I think what we do is we give them a little bit more room. Right? Mm hmm And then we go... Shapa. Oh, dang. And then we're going to... Give them another one. Shapa. Then we're gonna do a gap. Like so. Mm hmm. So, uh, I come to my first one. I realize I gotta keep moving. I move on to. You know what? Actually, no. It's gotta be up. So, they see this. They're gonna have to jump on this platform. What's gonna happen is when I jump and land on it. I don't wanna do that. When I jump and land on it, that's probably good. It's going to push them downward, right? They're gonna land out and be like, oh, okay. Oh no, this platform falls. I didn't realize it. Oh no. And so we're gonna give them a safety net right there. Oh, okay. I like that. All right, so there's the safety net right there. If they do fall down there and take the slow route, that's fine. They can just kind of move on there or they can just choose to jump straight from here onto this one saying they're an experienced player and no better. Mm -hmm. After that, I think that we give them a little bit of safety. And we say, Beacon of Hope. I think from here, we basically just have to introduce the spring, and uh, we'll be in pretty good shape, actually, for teaching the player. Yeah. Um, so after that, they're going to have a safety block here. Let's put another one, because I don't want to be too mean to them at the beginning, right? Precision jumping is important, and we're going to show that with uh, two spaces. However, um, it, it's it's pretty safe for the and most part. And if, if this were... Um the Super Mario 3D world, or the Super Mario Wii, whatever, the, the, the 3D version, right? Uh, if it were oh, that, yes. I would actually suggest putting more blocks because Mario has more momentum in physics in that. He does. Uh, I feel like you actually have the most control in Super Mario World. Yes. Um, and, of course, that's like mine and a lot of people's favorite for pretty much that's one of the reasons. There's a lot of things you could do in that game and the level design in that game with how many secrets there were and how they functioned was so awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that your level really tried to emulate that and I really enjoyed it. It was... It was a dip of nostalgia. Ah, yeah, baby. So what we're going to do is, if we're standing right here, we can see it. We're going to go spring down here. So what are you seeing right now? What are you thinking as a player? Like, if you were to move forward, what would catch your eye the most? What do you mean if I were to move forward? Like, right, if I could see something on the right side of my screen right now as a player, what would excite me? Mm, if I saw a pipe. A pipe? The pipe. The pipe? The pipe. I mean, we could do the pipe. I mean, it, even having like a block or two that shows you that there's a platform over there is usually enough to entice the player to go in that direction. Um, but I think since this is sort of the end of that like introductory zone, I think showing that uh, just like a piece of that pipe is enough to be like, ooh. It could be. I mean, if, if this whole introduction area basically is like this is it, right? We're not gonna add any more, then the pipe would be kind of it. But I'm not gonna make it like that easy on them, right? So <laughs> I'm gonna do one of these right there. That is a tough spot, right? Totally doable. I like that too, because you can't make that jump with normal Mario jump. You can't even make that jump if you just bounce off the trampoline. But not even. Um, so it forces the player to learn the trampoline mechanics in order to pass. And it's not so difficult that, um, you know, they're dying while trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. They'll die when they go too far and they don't make it, but... Alright, so bam, what we're gonna do now is, uh, cause it's still gonna be in view for the player, we're gonna do another one of these, and then we're actually gonna drop down for the Maddox sake, because this is fun. Alright, make it a little sticky there, just so it's not the absolute speedrunner's... <laughs> <laughs> Absolute speedrunner's dream. That being said, you can obviously go back to World 2 and be like, are there enough threats that would actually hurt the player? And I honestly don't think, I think no, uh, but that's just me. Um, like I might actually, I would like argue putting like this bastard right there. Um, but 
that's you know there there are threats there are things and so so what we recapping back through it we have blocks sp spread throughout we have this block for safety just in case the player decides to immediately run forward and doesn't know what they're getting themselves into with the fireball mm -hmm. uh they can either take the high ground here where they have to jump over the fireball but in doing so they have an easy way of killing kamek which is nice or they can just speed run through a jump have to do a pretty not a near not a perfect jump but a pretty accurate jump mm -hmm. to get um through here over that fireball under Kamek without getting shot, and then jump smoothly right here, which is actually pretty hard itself. Then that transitions them right here. They, I mean, they can also, they, they have a number of ways of avoiding this fire bar. Right here, this teaches them that if they land on it, they're gonna fall down, and that gives them a safety net right here. They land on it, they see this fireball jump in the air, on top of the fact that this platform is falling, that fireball is going to be like just falling from its or just descending. They basically have to make the do or die jump now. That allows them to get up here. We introduce the spring, double fireballs. Used to seeing that, no problem. Hey, look, the tunnel. I'm excited to see that. Bam, down into the level. And then it leads us to the other end where we basically implement everything we've seen before. But in combination with one another. Yep. So that's that's actually the I think the biggest takeaway, actually, is that everything <clears throat> that we've taught the player up until this point, we've introduced every new element as a separate challenge, like it's standalone. Um, yeah, that's true. Thing. We're not combining them, we're not merging them and making just a million different, like, incredibly challenging things. The only thing that we're really combining are the fireballs and then the other challenge. Um, and that's just to make sure that it's challenging enough to continue being interesting. Um, but that's, that's, I think that's super important when you're teaching your players how to play your levels. Yeah, basically. I mean, that's that's pretty much it. We're done here. We've. There's one more thing that you need, and if I may. Yes, of course. After making your level, the absolute most important thing left to do... <clears throat> actually, this zone is pretty good. But... Best thing to do is... Polish it up. Make it look pretty. And some coins. Do some good stuff. Do some coins. One right there, one in the center. Can even add a coin here. Center. Center. Can I grab it? Oh, I can grab it. Yeah, okay, that's fair, because that's where the player's going to be jumping. Can even add coin there. Or do we want the player to go under? I think we want I to entice them don't. to go over. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I think uh, we don't do either, actually. We basically give them the option. That's fair. But right there. We could even do, like, a three-coin thing? Nah, I think Two just... Two coins is pretty solid. Yeah, that way it lies nice and center. The other nice thing about putting coins too is that we're rewarding the player for keeping their big mode because as soon as they lose it it's going to be a lot harder to get a lot of these coins absolutely it's nice it makes your level feel a lot more finished than it would otherwise yeah um you can also add in sounds and things like that uh i haven't really experimented too much with them because to be honest they annoy the heck out of me uh, but that's that's me. That's my personal preference. I, I'm not saying, you know, don't include them or whatever, but they can be frustrating. This is the only sound that I've used, and that's because it's the boss battle sound, which that's we could fair. throw in here. Absolutely. So we'll we'll have the uh, course code or yeah course ID uh, in the description. But let us know yeah. what you thought about this. Like we we had a lot of fun making this video, um, and we want to do more. Um, but if there is a particular thing you want us to talk about involving level design or Mario Maker, let us know. Because, you know, th these episodes are, take a little bit more work to create, but we're having a blast with this. So, so and check out the level two. Let us know what you thought of it. It's, it's simple, right? But um, the point of the, this was to kind of teach how um, implementing a learning curve or level flow... Uh, how, how to implement that, right? Um, so if you have any other questions on that too, drop us a comment and uh, strike up a conversation because we'll happily talk about it. Do you have anything else to add? I don't know how I just got through all that. Like, <laughs> just that leap of faith and it worked out and it didn't work out, but that was fun. Um, no, not really, actually. I think I've said a lot. Uh, and that was just like one simple subject. Right? I mean, granted, we had to build up to it, but yeah. <laughs>
Cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, thank you for watching. And uh, uh, we'll see you in the next episode. See you in the archives. See you in the archives. Did I show you... Uh, did I show you the, uh, the 3D vortex I learned how to make in this game? What? Okay, this is a bonus footage for later. Ready? All right. Boom. Boo. Right? Mm-hmm. What? That's ridiculous. <laughs> what? I mean, granted, it makes oh, you think man. that you can jump through it. You totally can't. But <laughs> oh, that's so. You, you it can hurts do, my brain. Yeah, right. You can do. Uh, you can do a lot of things with it. Actually, be like. Uh, no, that's not actually good. Well, you know, we have pretty much have to do a block. I didn't want to do that. Do like so. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get it? Can you get it? <laughs> That's pretty crazy, right? <laughs>